Hello, today we're talking about food chains and food webs for key stage three biology. So food chains and food webs, we're gonna start off with a food chain. So at the beginning of our food chain, we always have a plant or at least something that does photosynthesis. The plant, remember, we described as a producer in our last video. And the reason we called it a producer was because a producer makes food for itself. It makes food by photosynthesis. It makes food by photosynthesis. And we said it makes food, and with that food, it makes new tissue, new plant tissue. And we can introduce a new word here. That new tissue can be referred to as biomass. Biomass. That's tissue within a living thing. In this food chain, we have the plant that is eaten by, for example, a rabbit. So the biomass, that plant tissue, and the energy in the biomass, the biomass and the energy in the biomass goes to the rabbit when it eats the plants. Next in this food chain, we have a fox. And again, the biomass and the energy in that biomass goes to the fox when the fox eats the rabbit. So this is an example of a simple food chain. A simple food chain. So we can highlight that as one of our key terms. The one issue we have with this particular food chain is that what happens if all the rabbits die for some reason? There could be reasons for that. It could be, for example, there's a disease that kills them all. Or there could be some sort of change in the environment environment change that's env is short for environment that could cause them all to die what happens to the fox well the fox would have no food and therefore the foxes would all be gone too that would result in the death of the foxes and in extreme cases we could talk about extinction if it affected all the foxes of a particular kind of species of fox so this is not very good because the foxes rely on one food source however in reality there's not just rabbits and foxes that live in the area. We have other living things as well. Here on the left, we've got some seeds. And these seeds are also obviously from plants. We then have those seeds that can be eaten by, for example, mice. Two varieties of seeds. We have also the plant being eaten by this, possibly by this worm. The worm could be eaten by a hedgehog. The hedgehog is another food source for the fox. And also the mouse would be a food source for the fox as well. So this represents something that's slightly more realistic. Uh, mice sometimes eat worms as well from a little bit of research I did. So this is what we call a food web. This is a food web. This is a more realistic view of what actually happens in nature. More realistic. And this is actually better because, this is better because there is more stability in the ecosystem. The ecosystem is more stable. And the reason it's more stable is because each type of living thing has more than one food source. More food sources for each type of living thing. And this is better for the survival of the species in that ecosystem. So here we have a slightly more complex food web and we can see that there are a variety of food chains in this food web. So there's one, there's another one here with the mice and the owl. We've got the grass, grasshopper, bird, snake, and hawk for a slightly longer food chain. But we have a variety of food chains within this food web. So food webs contain many food chains. Food webs contain many food chains, as you can see in that diagram there. However, even this one is not the greatest of food webs because, let's just take an example, if we were to lose one particular species from this food web, let's say something happened to the grasshoppers, so there were no more grasshoppers, what effect would that have on this food chain? So there's our grasshoppers. Well, if there were no grasshoppers, unfortunately, there would be no more frogs because that's their only food source. If there's no more frogs, that means the owls will eat more mice. 
because there's not enough frogs for them or no frogs for them to eat. That will reduce the population of mice because more are being eaten by the owl. If more mice are being eaten, that means there's less food available for the fox and for the hawk because there's less mice. So it has an effect on the population of those two as well. We also have an issue with the birds because the birds eat grasshoppers, so they would have there would be no more birds, and therefore the snake would have no food either because both of its food sources have disappeared. And that in turn has more knock-on effects because the hawk would have one less food source for it and therefore it's going to have less food and make it harder for the hawk to survive. So something important to remember is that the more species we have in an environment, the more species the better. The more species we have, that means we have, more species means more biodiversity. More species means more biodiversity. And this is what we're going to look at next. So in terms of biodiversity, what do we mean? Biodiversity is the variety of different species within an ecosystem. So if we look here, we've got a whole bunch of different species. We've got the bees, which are pollinators which we've talked about previously. We've also got a variety of plants here. So there's a couple of types of plant there. We've got some different ones over here. We've got some grass as well, and some daisies and a variety of different plants. We have a variety of insects too, a variety of insects. You might just spot, spotted this grasshopper. We've got some wood lice here. Um, we've got some worms, although these are not insects, but we have worms as well and probably a whole bunch of uh, insects that we can't see. We have hedgehogs, which might eat the insects. We've got mice, which eat a variety of foods. We've got uh, the rabbits there and the birds that's in the tree there. And also we've got the foxes on the right hand side that you can see, you might be able to see. So very importantly, the bigger the biodiversity, the more stability we have in an ecosystem and this is better for humans and one example is uh, one example of why this is better for humans if you think about bees as pollinators bees pollinate food crops that humans use pollinate food crops which means we have more food crops which means we have more food so there we go, the meaning of food chains, food webs, why food webs are so important and why something called biodiversity, the variety of different species within an ecosystem is so important. Just again to highlight the point that we have in the, almost the middle of the screen there, the bigger the biodiversity, the more stability and the reason why that's important because it reduces the dependency of one species on just one other species. Each species is dependent on a whole range of other species so they are more likely to be able to survive when we have a bigger biodiversity. Okay so if you downloaded the work along sheet you could have put these notes on that sheet if not it'd be very advisable to make some notes on this for your key stage 3 biology and that's us done for today thanks very much and I'll see you soon.